Good morning, welcome, welcome to St Simon's, our online service. Um, it is wonderful to have you with us. Uh, I want to say particularly, um, it is great to have you with us. If you are, are joining us because somebody has sent you a link to this, because somebody said, oh, you should you know, go and, go and watch that on, on a Sunday morning and you wouldn't normally find yourself in church, um, thank you. Thank you, first of all, for, for making the time. And I'm delighted because actually this morning, um, it's going to be particularly helpful for, for, for you if you're joining us for the first time uh, because we're beginning a new little, um, what we call a sermon series, a new little section looking at the Bible um, in an account of Jesus' life called Mark. Uh, we're jumping in, I'll say a bit about that later, but the account of Mark uh, begins with these words, uh, the beginning of the good news about Jesus. The beginning of the good news about Jesus. It's great to have you with us this morning because we have good news to share, good news about Jesus, um, good news in a world facing pandemic, in, in a world um, battling with racism and social division. We have good news to share this morning. Uh, some good news in Jesus. So thank you. Um, I hope you see the good news of Jesus this morning. Um, I'm going to pray and then we're going to um, sing of um, God's goodness and we're going to praise him uh, for all the good that he's done through Jesus. So let me pray and then we're going to sing. Uh, Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we have good news. Um, good news to share of Jesus this morning. Um, help us um, to, to lift our hearts now as we sing uh, to praise you. In Jesus' name. Amen. Let's sing to God be the glory. Great things he has done. Well, it's great, isn't it, to be able to sing together, to, to thank God for his goodness to us and to his people in Jesus and all that he's done for us. And actually, as we do that, it also frees us to be able to admit the times when we get it wrong, uh, when we continue to, to stuff up and to, to not live um, the, the way in which God calls us to live. 
Um, and it's healthy for us each week to be able to, to pray and to admit those things that where we've got it wrong um, and bring them before God. And as God's people, we do that, uh, secure that we are forgiven, but we keep on omitting um, the times uh, when we've needed that forgiveness. And so we're going to do that in the words of this prayer that is going to be on the screen. Um, love you to join in with me uh, at home. So let's pray together. Father eternal, giver of light and grace, we have sinned against you and against each other in what we have thought, in what we have said and done, through ignorance, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have wounded your love and marred your image in us. We are sorry and ashamed and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Amen. Well, in Mark chapter 2, Jesus says these words uh, to a man that is brought to him. Son, your sins are forgiven. And that's what Jesus says uh, to each one of those who come to him in faith. Son, daughter, your sins are forgiven. Uh, rest in that today. Father, we thank you that our sins are forgiven in Christ. We praise you for that forgiveness, for that life that we have. In Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, children, we are going to be having our family focus. We are so thankful for Penny and for, for Michael and for Megan and for all those um, who help with our children's groups. Um, Penny's going to do our family focus. You're going to be looking at the same thing, uh, the same bit of the Bible that grown-ups are looking at. Uh, so Mark chapter 5, grown-ups, you get a little uh, tee up to, to what's to come in the sermon. Uh, then we're going to sing and then we're going to hear the Kenricks, uh, the Kenrick family pray for us. So over to Penny. Good morning, children. Okay, now last week we heard about a man that Jesus changed. Can anybody remember his name? He was called Saul. And in fact, Jesus changed him so much that he got a different name too. Can anybody shout out what his different name was? Let me see if I can hear it where I live. Oh, I think I heard something. He became Paul. All right. Um, okay, well, today's true story from the Bible is about somebody else that Jesus changed. And this somebody else was a very scary man. Here he is. How would you feel if he knocked on your door? I think you might be a bit scared. Okay, he lived outside in the hills and all day and night he'd roam out the hills. Right, making scary noises and cutting himself with stones. That's why he's got lots of cuts and bruises on him. And people had tried to tie him up with chains to stop him hurting himself. But he was so strong that he always broke the chains. But when he saw Jesus, the man dropped to his knees. That's the best I can do. He knew who Jesus was. And he shouted at the top of his voice, what do you want with me, Jesus, son of the most high God? Now Jesus knew, because Jesus knows everything, that it wasn't the man's fault that he behaved as he did. It was the devil's evil power that controlled him. So Jesus asked, what is your name? And the man replied, Legion, because there's a whole army of evil spirits inside me. So then Jesus commanded, evil spirits, come out of this man. And what do you think happened? The spirits obeyed Jesus and they came out of the man. And they asked, they begged to be allowed to go into a herd of pigs. And I've forgotten that my pigs are on the floor, so I'm just going to have to pick them up. 
Okay, here's the herd of pigs. They were feeding on the hillside and the spirit begged to be allowed to go into the herd of pigs and Jesus said, yes, they could. And do you know what happened? The spirit, the pigs, just went rushing down the hillside and into the lake. And when the man saw that, he knew that Jesus had taken the spirits away. He knew that Jesus had set him free from the devil's power forever. And when other people came to see what was going on, they saw the man who'd been controlled by the evil spirits and he was dressed and he was listening to Jesus and he wasn't at all scary anymore. Look how different he is. There was only one person who could change him like that and you know who that is, don't you? Of course, it was Jesus. But when the people saw him, they were afraid. They were afraid of Jesus because they knew that only a very great power could drive out the evil spirits. And you know what they did? They asked Jesus to leave. They said, don't stay here, we're afraid of you. But the man who'd been healed begged to go with Jesus because he loved Jesus. But Jesus said, I need you here. You can serve me best by telling all the people around here how kind God has been to you and letting them see what he has done. So that's what the man did. Even though he would rather have gone with Jesus, he obeyed him and he went away and he told everyone how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Let's just pray then. Be still. Heavenly Father, thank you that Jesus has more power than anyone. Thank you that Jesus has power over all evil and that he destroyed the power of evil by dying on the cross. Thank you that he had the power to heal this man and that he has the power to heal us because we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. God, please keep all the, of the children and teachers safe and happy. Amen. 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 Okay. Dear God, we thank you for all those people who have worked hard to look after us during lockdown. Amen. 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 Dear God, 
We thank you for all the beautiful places we can visit. We ask, Lord, that people look after our country, that they show respect wherever they go. We pray for those people who are finding this time really difficult, for people who are feeling anxious and overwhelmed. We pray that they look to you. Amen. 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 We pray for our mission partners, for New Hope Church in Sierra Leone, the Zambezi Mission and for the for Helen Sheridan. We also continue to pray for the work being done at Wellfield Church. We pray for those in need in our parish, as well as those in our wider community in Southport. We ask that you, Lord, provide guidance for those who may be affected by coronavirus, be it health or financially, for people who are concerned about their jobs and what the future may hold. We pray that more may come to know your love at this testing time. Amen. 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 We pray for all our church family that we all stay connected to each other and continue to look after one another and be supportive. We pray for those who are missing human connection. We pray for our government and all, and our, and all our world leaders that they look to you for guidance as they make decisions that affect your people. We pray for what has been happening in America. We pray for peace and understanding and that people will come to know your love above all else. We pray that we use this time to discover ways in which we can serve you and how we can grow in faith. And for those who will come to know you for the first time. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, be your name. name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will be done on earth as in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us today our daily bread. Forgive, Forgive us our sins. sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Well, this week, this Thursday, uh, we are, we've invited everybody at St Simon's along to the Northwest Gospel Partnership um, Ministry Training Course. Um, they've got a little taste of evening of what that course is. Again, uh, your regulars here will have got an email about that. Um, it is open to anybody, it doesn't commit you to anything. Um, let me know, email me if you want details for that. Um, it's for a couple of hours on Thursday night on Zoom, um, just to see what, what this training course is um, that is open to all Christians um, in the Northwest. Uh, a week on Thursday, um, we, again, we've got something. Uh, we've got a, a, a mission partner of ours, who's going to come to a Zoom meeting and we're going to hear um, a bit about their work um, and all that um, they're doing. Um, so that's a week on Thursday, so we'll watch that Thursday the 18th. Um, again, you'll have got an email about that, um, uh, but do put that in your diary and do come along. Phone in if you can, um, if you can't use um, Zoom or, or on the internet. Well, we're going to, uh, we're going to um, hear God's word read at the moment, uh, Beck and Afton. It's going to read Mark chapter 5, uh, verses 1 to 20 for us. Uh, and really, I just want to say, um, we're going back to Mark's accounts of Jesus' life. We looked at the first four chapters uh, just before Christmas. Uh, well, we're going back to, to chapter 5. And these chapters, chapters 5 to 8, um, they're all really about who Jesus is and why we can trust him. Uh, they're, they're all answering the question, who is this? Um, and... Um, maybe we're asking that question for the first time, but even if we know who Jesus is, there is something there to show us, um, do we see who Jesus really, really is? Um, has who he is, his identity, begun to impact our, our hearts and our lives? Um, so I'm excited to, to be looking at this part of God's word again, uh, and as we hear it read now, um, I'm going to pray for us. So let me pray. Father, as we hear your word read, um, as we um, uh, hear your word preached, uh, please would you show us who Jesus is, show us why we can trust him, uh, show us why he is good news. Help us to feel that good news uh, this morning. In Jesus' name, Amen. Mark 
chapter 5, verse 1 to 20. They went across the lake to the region of the Gerasons. When Jesus got out of the boat, a man with an evil spirit came from the tombs to meet him. This man lived in tombs and no one can find him anymore, not even with a chain. For he had often been chained hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day, among the tombs and in the hills, he would cry out and cut himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and fell on his knees in front of him. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus, son of the Most High God? Swear to God that you won't torture me. For Jesus had said to him, Come out of this man, you evil spirit. Then Jesus asked him, What is your name? My name is Legion, he replied, for we are many. And he begged Jesus again and again not to send them out to the area. A large herd of pigs was feeding on the nearby hillside. The demons begged Jesus, send us among the pigs, allow us to go into them. He gave them permission and the evil spirits came out and went into the pigs. The herd, about 2,000 in number, rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. Those tending the pigs ran off and reported this to the town and countryside, and the people went out to see what had happened. When they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. Those who had seen it told the people what had happened and to the demon-possessed man, and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus to leave their region. As Jesus was getting into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. Jesus did not let him, but said, Go home to your family and tell them how much the Lord has done for you, and how he has had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him, and all the people were amazed. Well, I'm sure many of you have been watching the news this week and you've been rightly appalled by the events that have been happening in America. We've seen the sickening death of George Floyd and then the outpouring of violence and anger in response to that ingrained racism. Uh, and those that have been commenting have, have been very quick to say that racism is, is evil. Um, so... Uh, Formula One, they were tweeting this week in, in support of Lewis Hamilton, uh, and they said that racism is an evil that no sport or society is truly immune from. Um, Lucas Films, who made the Star Wars films, uh, tweeted in support of uh, their, their actor, John Boyega. Uh, they said that evil, the evil that is racism, must stop. The evil that is racism must stop. It is right, isn't it, to, to see that kind of oppression um, of, of another race and say it is an evil act. Um, it, is, it is right to, to say that. And, and we see the fingerprints of evil all, all over the news. Uh, we, we make the same sort of statements when we see a, a terrorist atrocity or, or when we experience a terrorist attack. Um, so three years ago last Wednesday, uh, the London Bridge terror attacks took place. And at an online service this week, a member of Southwark Council said, we will never forget the loss and pain caused by those evil acts. It's hard to deny that we see evil in our world. And as we look back through, through the last hundred years, as we still battle things like, um, uh, like uh, human trafficking, we, we rightly say these are evil acts. Now, there's an evil here. And the question that we need to ask then is, is what is the nature of this evil and where do we find hope in response and in the face of it? Where do we find hope in the face of the evil that we see in our world? Well, there are some of the questions that Mark 5 begins to answer for us. As we see of this account of Jesus with this demon-possessed man, and the first thing we see is that actually evil is too strong for us. Evil is too strong for us. We see that in the first five verses. So, so at the start in verse one, Jesus, he steps off the boat. Jesus, having, having just calmed a storm, um, 
a raging storm of the word, and so you know he, he's there with his disciples, and they're still um, they're still dripping, and they've hardly caught their breath. Uh, when immediately, verse one, um, this this man uh, possessed by an evil spirit comes tearing down the mountainside, screaming at the top of his voice. Uh, we're told in verse two uh, that the man has an impure or, or evil spirit. And that's the first thing that actually we see about evil in our world. It is not just an evil act, but there is an evil force. That Satan stands behind evil. Satan and the forces, the spirits, are under his control. One of which, well, we're going to see that it's more than one, is possessing this man. And just listen as... Mark describes the man's state. Uh, as he does that, we see what Satan and his forces are all about. Verse 3, uh, this man lived in the tombs, and no one could bind him anymore, not even with a chain, for he'd often been chained, hand and foot, but he tore the chains apart and he broke the irons on his feet. No one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and in the hills he would cry out, and cut himself with stones. Oh, what a desperate situation for this man, uh, consumed by by this uh, by this evil. Uh, three times Mark tells us, uh, verse two, verse three, verse five, uh, that the man lives amongst the dead. He lives in the tombs. See, possession by evil, uh, this evil spirit leaves him in a place of death. Uh, Satan seeks to bring death to God's world. Twice in those verses uh, we're told that people have tried to chain him up but he's too strong and, and with supernatural strength verse 4 he tore the chains apart and he broke the irons on his feet no one was strong enough to subdue him. You know people are trying to chain them up no one's going to go near this cemetery the man's too dangerous no one is going to go near the man. Um, you know, you can imagine saying to your kids, whatever you do, do not go down to the tombs. You can go out and play, but don't go to the tombs. Promise me you're not going to the tombs. It's too dangerous. And so this man is alone, he's isolated. See, Satan brings death to God's world. He also brings uh, and destroys relationship. And, and we can hear the man's cries, can't we, echoing down the valley as he disfigures himself, cutting himself with stones. See, Satan brings death, uh, he destroys relationship, and he seeks to disfigure and destroy those made in God's image. Can, can you feel the horror, the hopelessness of this man's situation? And actually, down in verse 19, we're told uh, there's a reference there to his home. Uh, this man has a family. Uh, he's someone's son, or, or brother, or husband, or, or father. Imagine him uh, as one of your family. Oh, Satan's aim, evil's aim in God's world is to, to bring death. Uh, to destroy relationship and to, to disfigure uh, the image of God in those we love. Uh, and that power of evil is too strong for us. It's too strong for humanity. No one, verse 4, no one was strong enough to subdue him. Or, or, or verse 3, no one could bind him anymore. It's too strong. See, Satan and the forces of evil are, are real, and his power is too strong for humanity. That's so why you must never dabble with uh, Ouija boards, uh, with seances, with, with the occult. Uh, dark forces are not to be made light of. Uh, they're too strong for us, uh, and we're to avoid them. And when we see the product of, of Satan, when we see his fingerprints in the world uh, with terrorism, uh, we, within the human heart, um, as, as, as racism uh, pours out, we need to know that actually we are not strong enough on our own to overcome it. 
You know, the quotes that I, that I read out um, a moment ago um, go on to say uh, that how uh, we might overcome evil. Uh, Formula One, uh, they tw the, the tweet went on to say, and it is only together that we can oppose racism and eradicate it. Together we are stronger. Yeah, stronger, but sadly not strong enough to overcome racism, uh, a product of evil. Because racism and racial discrimination is sadly as old as humanity. And the London Bridge uh, councillor went on. Uh, we also remember the bravery shown by so many that night and, and the way our great city came together in the face of evil to stand and to remain united. Oh, until the next act of terror gets through the security services. Look, uh, uh, of course we should stand against terrorism. Of, co of course we should speak out against racism and, and seek to, to root it out. Um, and as Christians, we should be speaking about those things. But as Christians, we do that realistically as well. Uh, we know that, that we may make progress, but we will never root out these things from, from this world uh, because they're a product of, of Satan and his forces. And we need someone stronger. Uh, we, we can't do it ourselves. We need someone stronger. We and the world, uh, we actually need Jesus. See, evil is too strong for us, but Jesus is the deliverer we need. Do you see the, the greater power of Jesus in verses 6 to 13? See, his power, his authority over evil, that it cannot stand before him. Verse 6, now, when the man saw Jesus from a distance, he ran and he fell on his knees in front of him. Isn't that striking? The spirits, they don't run away, they run to Jesus. Evil doesn't run away from Jesus, there's no point. He can't get away. He knows the power of Jesus. This Jesus is one more powerful. And listen to, to what um, the spirits say through the man. He shouted at the top of his voice, What do you want with me, Jesus? Serve the Most High God. In God's name, don't torture me. Screaming at the top of his voice, um, evil makes the clearest confession of who Jesus is. Son of the Most High God. He knows exactly who Jesus is. And even pleads in God's name not to be tortured. Sees Jesus' power and his authority. And do you see that how Jesus is in complete control? In the face of this, what must be a terrible sight. I mean, how are the disciples feeling? Jesus is in complete control. Verse 9, Jesus asked him, what is your name? And the evil spirits, they have to obey. My name is Legion, he replied. For we are many. And when we see at that point just how desperate the man is. Not possessed just by one spirit. Uh, but a whole army. A, a legion in the Roman army would be thousands of soldiers. Uh, the man is possessed by, by thousands of demons. And yet such is Jesus' power. that This whole army of demons. Um, they beg Jesus. And they beg Jesus, verse 10, again and again, not to be sent out of the area. They beg Jesus, in verse 12, uh, to, to be sent into the pigs. And such is Jesus' power and his authority over evil. Um, he simply gives permission. Uh, and they depart into the pigs. He gave them permission, verse 13. And the impure spirits came out of the man went into the pigs and the herd about 2,000 in number rushed down the steep bank into the lake and were drowned. You see, Jesus, his complete power and authority. Evil is too strong for us, but, but Jesus, he's the deliverer we need. Now we just say, well, a lot of people will ask at this point, well, what about the pigs? Oh, poor pigs. 
Um, either uh, on the one hand you think about all, all that bacon, what a waste, um, or, or maybe you're thinking uh, more on the humane lines of, well that's terrible, or those innocent pigs. Look, short answer is, it's not Jesus who drowns the pigs, okay? Um, it's the demons. And actually the drowning shows us just how destructive evil is. Uh, this is evil's intent, uh, to bring death and, and, and to destroy. An evil that's too powerful for us, but an evil that begs for mercy from Jesus. See, so Jesus is the deliverer that we need. Now, these demons are like a primary school bully suddenly caught uh, in the act of bullying by a head teacher. They're confronted with a greater power. And so they beg for mercy and are, are driven out at Jesus' word. So we're not to be afraid of the very real forces of evil. Can I say, in, in three years here, I've met a surprising number of people who um, have dabbled in seances or, or Ouija boards or, or, or the occult. Uh, people who are scared and are actually scarred by those experiences. I say, if that's you, come to Jesus. You don't need to be afraid of evil with Jesus. He has uh, ultimate power and authority. Evil cannot stand uh, before Jesus. Now, and when we look at, at the transformation the man undergoes um, through Jesus, verse 15, sitting there, dressed in his right mind, we, we see that Jesus reverses the work of Satan. Where, where evil brings death, Jesus gives life. Where evil destroys relationship, Jesus brings together. Where evil uh, disfigures the image of God, Jesus restores uh, that image. What a deliverer. What a saviour, what a rescuer we have in Jesus. Uh, that's what Jesus uh, does for each person who comes to him in faith. And it's a work that he will one day complete in heaven. And so his people look forward to that day. Uh, that day in heaven with Jesus when we will be free from the presence of evil. Uh, free from terrorism, free from racism. Uh, free from uh, slavery, free from Satan's lies and temptations, uh, restored to life and relationship, perfected in the image of God. That's what we look forward to, and that's, the, that's what Jesus brings. Oh, doesn't it make your heart sing? Doesn't it, it, it make you feel awe and affection for Jesus? That this is who Jesus is, and this is what he brings for his people. Well, we're going to pause, we're going to express our, our thanks um, and confidence as we sing. And we're going to sing together, you alone can rescue, you alone can save. Let us out of 
Well, evil is too powerful for us, but Jesus is the deliverer we need. So don't reject Jesus, trust Jesus. Don't reject Jesus, trust Jesus. Uh, in verses 14 to 20, after we've seen the great power that Jesus has over evil, um, the response is surprising because we get those who, who reject Jesus as well as the man who trusts Jesus. Look at the response of those um, from the region of, of the Gerasenes. Uh, they, they hear um, about what's happened, and so they come to see for themselves. Uh, verse 15. Uh, when they came to Jesus, they saw the man who had been possessed by the legion of demons, sitting there, dressed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. But they know the hopeless situation the man was. They were scared of the man, they, they, they avoided him. But now they see what's happened. And so now they're afraid of Jesus because they think, well, what power does Jesus have? And just like the disciples you know, at the end of, of Mark chapter four, terrified, who is this even the wind and the waves obey him? The fear of Jesus's power. But, but, but that leads us to, to the real tragedy in verses 16 and 17. Now those who had seen it uh, told the people what had happened to the demon-possessed man uh, and told about the pigs as well. Then the people began to plead with Jesus, to, to beg with Jesus to leave their region. And just as the, the, the demons begged Jesus, same word, these people begged Jesus, but they begged Jesus to leave. And Jesus, the son of the most high God, uh, the one who has power over evil, who can keep his people safe. Please leave me, Jesus. Please go away. What a tragedy. And I think it's because they actually don't want Jesus to have power over them. They see something of the power that Jesus has, and actually they don't want that power um, at work in their own lives. Um, I guess lots of people looking into the Christian faith, uh, lots of questions. It's really important, isn't it, to, to engage with those questions, to ask those questions. You know, it's why we run things like Christianity Explored. Uh, but ultimately, it, it comes down to, to one question. Uh, will we submit to Jesus? Uh, will we let Jesus have uh, the final say in, in our lives? Will we let the things that he's for be the things that we're for, and the things that he's against be the things that we're against. And will his priorities become our priorities? Ultimately, it comes down to actually, do I want Jesus's power, uh, to submit to Jesus's power? Can I say, please don't make the same mistake. Please don't make the same mistake uh, as, as these people, because sadly, Jesus will leave. And look how verse 18 goes on. As Jesus was getting into the boat, Jesus does what they say. He leaves. They reject him and he rejects them. Don't, don't, don't make that mistake. Uh, respond uh, with trust. Don't reject Jesus, trust Jesus. Because this is how the freed man uh, responds, isn't it? 
Verse 18 again. As Jesus was going into the boat, the man who had been demon-possessed begged to go with him. <laughs> uh, again, same word. Uh, they, they begged Jesus to leave. The, the demons begged Jesus uh, not to torture them. Uh, the man now begs Jesus that he may go with Jesus. He pleads, Jesus, let me be with you. Let me go with you. This man who has, who has turned his life around uh, and freed him uh, from uh, bondage to evil, he longs to be with Jesus. Now, it's a beautiful picture, isn't it? Uh, the, this, this devotion that the man has now to Jesus, uh, the, the one who's delivered him. And I, I guess sort of kind of lockdown has given us a bit of, of a sense of that, of what it means to long to be with somebody. Um, think of uh, a loved one, family member, friends who we've not seen um, in the flesh and, and we long to be with them. Well, this man, he begs, he longs to be with Jesus now. He longs to be in Jesus' presence. But actually Jesus refuses, doesn't he, in verse 19. Uh, Jesus did not let him, uh, but he said, go home to your own people. Tell them how much the Lord has done for you and how he's had mercy on you. So the man went away and began to tell in the Decapolis how much Jesus had done for him. And all the people were amazed. Go home, says Jesus. Lovely touch. Go, go back to your family. I, think I give you back to your family. And just go and tell people how much I've done for you. Tell, tell them how I've had mercy on you. And actually, the, the man shows his faith, doesn't he? He shows his trust in Jesus by obeying. Uh, by going and doing just that. I think he becomes the, 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 first, the first missionary. Uh, and to the people's amazement, um, he speaks um, in, this, in this Gentile region, this non-Jewish region, of all that Jesus has done for him in freeing him from the power of evil. And actually there we get a little picture, don't we, of what it is uh, to, to be uh, somebody who trusts Jesus now. Uh, that as Christians we've been set free from Satan's kingdom by Christ's death. Um, we're safe with Jesus and uh, on one day um, we will experience his presence uh, and we long for that day. Uh, but whilst we wait, Jesus says, just, just go and tell people how much I've done for you. Uh, go and tell people um, how I've rescued you and, and delivered you and saved you. Go and tell them about, about the mercy that, I, that I've had on you. Uh, that, 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 the man speaking there, I, he's kind of like a stream, isn't he? That, that just, um, well, not, not a stream, a, a spring. A, a spring of fresh water uh, that just bubbles up. And, and, and you can't stop the water bubbling up and then flowing down and bringing life. Uh, he's so thankful, so amazed at all that Jesus has done, but it just flows out of him. And Jesus says, just go and tell people how much I've done for you. Tell them about all the ways I've had mercy on you. And he does. And so often, isn't it? The, we tie ourselves in, in knots as we, as we think about, um, you know, sharing something of Jesus with people. We think, oh, I've not got the right words to say, or um, I've not got, um, you know, all, all the arguments in, in place. And um, just tell people how much Jesus has done for you. That's, that's what he says, isn't it? It takes all the pressure off. And just, 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 just tell people. Tell people the hope that you have in Jesus in the, in the face of evil. Uh, and... Uh, and, and how he's rescued you. You know Jesus is the one who's delivered you. You, you, see, you see his power. Just, just tell people how much he's done for you. In your own words, what he's done in your own life. Tell, tell, tell people how he's had mercy on you. How he's delivering you and will one day finally deliver you. Just share what Jesus has done. And actually, as we do that, as, as, we're, as we don't reject Jesus, but, but we trust Jesus, and, and as we simply say what he's done for us, that changes the world. That changes the world one person at a time, doesn't it? As somebody, uh, someone else comes to trust Jesus and experiences rescue uh, and freedom from, from Satan's kingdom. Uh, and as, as we stand uh, with, with brothers and sisters um, against racism, uh, as, as we fight terrorism, uh, as we campaign against human trafficking, uh, we do those things 
And we do those things as we speak of all that Jesus has done for us, of the hope that we have in Jesus in the face of evil. Because that's, that's where the power lies, in, in Jesus. And in sharing all the ways he's had mercy on us and how we can find hope in him. That will change the world. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, uh, we thank you and we praise you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you for his power and his authority uh, that, we, that we see combined with his compassion. We thank you that there is, uh, there is none like him. Heavenly Father, please help us be those who, who just bubble over uh, with joy um, and thankfulness for all that Christ has done uh, for us and how he's had mercy on us. In Jesus' name and for your glory's sake. Amen. Well, uh, we're going to sing. Uh, we're going to sing our final song, All My Days. Uh, I will sing this song of gladness. Let's sing together at home.
Well, thank you for making the time to, to watch this, uh, this service, to, to gather together in some sense. Um, we have got our Zoom team coffee happening at 12.15, 12.15 to 1. We break out into little small groups, so it's not everybody talking at once. Um, I will be on my emails, so if you've not got access to that and you'd like access, just drop me an email and we can get that to you. Um, and why not, hey, why not share this, this link, this service, uh, with somebody you know? Um, as a way of sharing all that Jesus has done for you. Uh, why, not, why not share it and why not invite somebody to, to watch uh, this week um, and in the weeks to come. Let me pray one final prayer for us and then I'll let you go. Heavenly Father, we give you great thanks and praise for, for Jesus. Thank you that he's the deliverer that we need. Help us to uh, be those who simply share all that he's done for us. And thank you that in him, in Jesus, we find hope in the face of evil. In Jesus' name, amen.